You know, you used a word with me off camera, and I'm not sure if I've got it right. Pionera, pioneer in Spanish. Pionera. Pioneer. That's who, what who calls you that and why? The Latino community calls me La Pionera, the pioneer, because I was there first. Uh, it's not even necessarily that I that I did so many great films because I've done I've done a lot of very poor films in my life and a lot of poor television things, but I was there first. I'm the one who suffered the slings and the arrows. It's gotten a whole lot better. It's not great yet. Because right now we're going through a Latino phase. Let's just see how faddish that is in a couple of years. And let's see how much of a fad that is. There will always be wonderful people like Jimmy Smith's, wonderful actors. Um, Edward James Olmos, Andy Garcia, wonderful actors. Uh, one of my favorite Hispanic American actresses is uh, Elizabeth Pena, who did Lone Star for John Sayles. Oh, I think she's just wonderful. She's not gorgeous. She's never going to be a big star. Never. She will be doing films like, if she's lucky, which would be wonderful. I would love to do John Sayles films. I have a better chance doing those kind of films than even thinking of going to Fox or MGM or Columbia or wherever. That's the place for people of my age to be in independent films, and that's what I've been doing. You know, you went from a, a point where you were the only Latina in Hollywood mm -hmm. to a point where it was like you say, almost fashionable for a time. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? Yes, but I'm, you know, I'm, I've been around the block a few times, and I think fad, and I think trend, and I think uh, fashionable. Um, those words have very short shelf life. So we'll see. If there are people who continue to study acting Latinos, because it's not enough to have a personality. Well, maybe it is. See, I don't really know. I don't know. Maybe that is enough. God knows there have been enough successes that way with the, the American, the English-speaking market, and it may happen that way with, with Latinos. I would just like to see films that are mixed, where you don't have to do a Latino-based film because it's the only way you're going to get to work. That's ghetto. We're ghettoizing ourselves out of necessity, and that's a shame. Because we don't live in a ghettoized world, necessarily. We live in a homogenous world. You know, as a celebrity, as a personality, as someone who's famous, you face probably a lot of interviews over the years, a lot of media coverage. Can I read you a quote that I came across? This was um, about the time you were doing West Side Story. Luella Parsons described George Chikiris as, quote, soft-spoken and quiet, and his skin isn't nearly as dark in real life as it is on the motion picture screen. That sounds so horrible, viewed from the year 2000. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what is not so terrific either, viewed from the year, viewed from the year 2000, that we all had to have the same dark makeup, the Puerto Ricans, the sharks. And I remember at the time resenting that terribly, saying we are so many different colors. Some of us are blonde. I mean, think now Christina Aguilera, think Jennifer Lopez. Even though maybe her real color is dark, she makes a beautiful honey blonde, whatever that is. And it, it, and we, we come in all colors when you're Hispanic. Not just Caribbean, but Hispanic. We, we are as black as jet, and we are as blonde as Meryl Streep with those kind of features as well, not necessarily wide noses and, and, and uh, big lips. So um, I remember resenting having to wear that very dark makeup. That wasn't my color. That makeup didn't match my skin. You know, and nowadays, you know, when you put on makeup, you put on makeup that more or less matches your skin tones. But that's how it was. You know, during this interview, we skipped a lot of things that you worked on in your career. Was there anything that we didn't touch on that you really want to be remembered for? I, I would guess that um, West Side Story, you know, my goodness, that, that gave me world celebrity. It, it, it won me the highest uh, award that can be had in my profession. Um, I loved doing a film called The Four Seasons that Alan Alda wrote and directed and co-starred in. I loved it because I played a woman, uh, not necessarily of a particular and very, very, very specific nationality. Uh, I loved doing The Ritz, where I played this crazy 
Puerto Rican woman. So it's not really necessarily about about uh, uh, um, that kind that kind of gender. It's about doing things that you really love and that are proud of, and I'm very proud of those. Actually, I've been in some classics. More than most people I know, I've been in The King and I, Singing in the Rain, West Side Story. The Four Seasons have become a, ca a classic, Carnal Knowledge. That's five, and I think there's one more, but I, I can't remember what it is. But they're forever. Those are films, those particular films are going to be around forever. What did you take your greatest lessons from as you were struggling or doing wonderfully in this business? Who did you learn from? Unfortunately, I had no role models. You see, I was it. So I, it just has to do, I think, with character and having the ability to uh, pick yourself up and dust yourself off. I really had no role models. Lupe Velez and Dolores El Rio were before my time. And um, there was really absolutely nobody, nobody, as black people very often didn't have anybody. But actually, they did. They at least had uh, Bojangles. He was wonderful. They had um, uh, opera singers. We had nobody that America knew about. There were people, but America didn't know about them. Do you, f do you hear from Latinas today who say... Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, it's interesting about the Latino community. I didn't know this for a long time. But they, I'm greatly admired by my own people. And I didn't know this because we don't have a tradition of writing fan letters. That's not something we do. We don't do that. And so I never knew. When I found out just a few years ago that Spanish Harlem practically went on fire when I got my Oscar, that windows were opening almost like in West Side Story, I get goosebumps, and people yelling, she got it, she did it, she did oh, it. makes me want to cry. <sighs> And of course, we're out of tape, so that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine that. That is beautiful. I never heard that either. Who told you that? People who lived back there? Yeah. When did you My find it out? windows were open. People were on fire escapes yelling. She did it. She did it. <gasps> That's great. Do you still have connections back there? Oh, yeah. And I have, I'm very, very active with the uh, Latino community. Very, very, because... That's the one place where young people do know me. It's like their mothers and their fathers say, you take a lesson from Rita Moreno. You know, a lot of that has been passed on by the families, by the people who are my age, and even younger people, people in their 40s and stuff. They pass it on, and I become positively iconic. I didn't know this. I had no idea. I had no idea, because they don't write letters, so how am I to know? You know, isn't that nice? I think that's lovely. I got into an elevator recently, and uh, a girl walked on Puerto Rican. She says, oh, La Leyenda, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? So now my friends call me Lala, Miss La, Le La Leyenda. 